It has been reported that the WAC conference is thinking about adding Texas State, UTSA, Montana, Seattle, and Denver. The conference has lost several members in recent months and is getting ready to rebuild. Associated Student Government Executive Assistant Cody DeSalvo says the ASG was the driving force behind the push to a new conference back in 2007. Under the Reagan Pugh administration, President Pugh, he championed a bill through the ASG Senate in order to begin the process of moving to doing the drive and moving to FBS. The change in conferences would likely bring an increase in scholarships, more sponsorships, and greater name recognition for Texas State. DeSalvo says funding is perhaps the main reason a conference change would be attractive. I think that one of the two of the major things we're going to see out of this is funding for the, all, all across because if you get funding for athletics you're going to see more talent come to those athletic programs. A reporter for the San Marcos Daily Record, Tyler Mayforth, first uncovered the story about Texas State changing conferences. He says the city and its residents would benefit from the move. It's going to bring not only is it going to help Texas State, it's going to help San Marcos because they're going to be bringing in a lot of big name teams here, hopefully. I mean, we're not looking at next year, the year after, but by 2013, 2014, and 2015, you could look at some high profile FBS teams coming to Texas State to play the Bobcats. Plans are already underway for renovations to the football stadium and other athletic facilities. The master plan for the stadium includes adding more seats to increase its capacity. With a recent push to have Texas State University in the WAC Conference, you can see why it's a good time to be a Texas State Bobcat or a San Marcos resident. Who knows what the future may bring? For Bobcat Update, I'm Jeremy Clough. Texas State is providing a forum for student bloggers. Kate Giese has more in this Bobcat Update. The Texas State Twitter page recently posted a list of blogs written by students and faculty. The university is urging students to express themselves. Just last week, a Facebook message was sent to students urging them to post links to their blogs. It was a message that was well received. I just thought it was a really cool idea because I didn't realize how, um, how much people blogged, how much people blog about their interests and stuff like that, so I thought I would just share my interests and start reading other people what they're interested in and what they're blogging about. Many students use the internet as a journal to talk about their interests or promote their ideas. I just write about the things that I like or things that I want to get. Fashion and crafting blogs. Yeah, fashion and crafting blogs. Autographed sports memorabilia. So a foreign exchange program in Japan. New hip hop songs. Random thoughts about how great San Marcos is. Besides authoring a blog, students are readers too. Blogs are a great source for learning about fashion, sports, and the news of the day. More people than you might expect are expressing themselves via the World Wide Web. www.alltheworldiswaiting.blogspot.com Over the last decade, blogging has really taken off as a social medium. It's even considered a news source. It seems these days everybody has something to say. So, Texas State wants to know what you're writing about. For Bobcat Update, I'm Kate Giese. Many voters have already shown up at the polls by casting ballots at the San Marcos Public Library, but the campaign won't let up until November 2nd. It would be difficult to ignore. Turn on your TV or radio and you'll hear all about it. Thousands of dollars in ads are being spent every hour of every day. Many of the ads are negative and some believe that approach ultimately hurts the candidates. They, they do hurt the people who are running for office because negative publicity is just that negative and it, it hurts everybody. It's all biased and it's, it's mostly one-sided for either side and it's not a whole lot of talk about things that matter. But negative campaigning has long been a staple of American politics. And if you really look back at our history, uh, candidates have always done it. Even Andrew Jackson, when he was running through, when he was running for president, his his mother was actually um, questioned and, and and insulted during a campaign. Whether the ads are negative or not, many believe the average voter already knows by now who they will be voting for. With negative campaigning on the rise, San Marcos voters are stuck with the tough decision to believe what they see on TV or on the internet to be true. With Bobcat Update, I'm Michael Fallis.